and I want to deal with a topic entitled pray for my enemies. Pray for my enemies. Remember this, we are dealing with the principles that God has given us so that we can move forward. We wanted to know who God is and how does he operate. Now I'm dealing with some of the principles on how he operates. So we got to get these things right. All right. And this is tough, folks. This is a tough scripture. I've struggled with it myself. I've really had to get a revelation of what God wants in this. All right. But let's go. Matthew chapter 5, 44 says this. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and who persecute you. I went before God. I said, God, I don't understand this. If you say that you're just God, how can I go and pray and back somebody who is trying to destroy me? Who is trying to hurt me? Who is trying to stop me from doing what God called me to do? Remember that your enemy is somebody who's either jealous, insecure, or wants something that you have. And so how can I bless that person? How can I even pray for that person? How can I sit down and say, they've despise, uh, despisefully used me, abused me, even persecuted me. I don't understand this. God, show me the revelation. Because I, I was at the point... Fair is fair. I like the Old Testament that says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The guy does something, you give him equal trouble back. Now that made sense to me. Okay? Fair is fair. But let me tell you something. When God showed me this, He said, who is the judge? I said, you are God. And He says, who must judge? I said, you have to. So then, I, then God says, because God clearly says in Matthew 7, 1, you do not judge. So we are not called to judge. And so I said, but why must I pray for my enemy? So that God can have a way with your enemy. Remember this. God does not do anything on this earth unless he's been permitted to do it. So if I am praying for my enemy, I know that God will come and intervene. I know that God will come and change stuff. I know that God will come and work on them. But listen to me. I know this is going to be a hard statement. Listen carefully. But the biggest thing is you could be instrumental for them to be saved. You could be instrumental in getting them out of hell. Now, in my life, there have been many seasons when I've had things, injustices, and all sorts of things happen to me that's been ungodly and, and, and not correct. And there were times when I took it in my own strength, and I thought, fair is fair, and I'll tell everybody, you know, right is right. And I found that that did nothing other than keep an offense in my heart, which I had to dealt with, be dealt with. But when my biggest battle came, because I've had three rounds of serious attacks in my life. But when my biggest battle came and we lost everything and everybody ostracized us, I said, God, I'm not going to go that route again. I said, God, this time I'm going to pray for my enemies. I'm going to ask you to give me a love for them that they get saved, that they get out of this. I want to tell you it took time. But every single one of those that hurt me, and there were multiple because some of them were boards and groups of people, every single one has come to repent. One even on his deathbed phoned me and repented. I want to tell you right now, God is the vindicator. God is the judge. God is going to sort these things out. So don't you step into the mix. So it's a principle. God says don't judge. God says um, whatever you, you know, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And now God says this, pray for your enemies. So that, I'm adding this now, so that God can have his way in their lives. So that God can do the work. So that the Holy Spirit can come and bring freedom and liberty into that person's life. And get them out of hell and into heaven. Isn't that our heart? Isn't that what Jesus Christ did on the cross? Alright, when he took that robber. And he says, you'll be with me in paradise. Isn't that what Stephen did when he was being stoned? And he said, God forgive them because they don't know what they do. When I first saw that, I thought, Stephen, are you nuts? You're supposed to be preaching the gospel and these guys are killing you. How can you pray a prayer like that? 
until I understood this revelation. Because now God was working in the people who caused the nonsense. And one of those people standing at Stephen's stoning was Saul. The Bible says he was standing there holding the garments of the guy stoning. He was there and he was in control. And so I want to tell you, look at God did to Saul and make him Paul to change a lot of the New Testament. So I want to tell you right now, there is power in praying for your enemies. Even if they persecute you, despitefully use you, abuse you, hurt you, whatever it is, pray for your enemies. Allow God to get hold of them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical and emotional healing in Jesus name. The blood of Christ was shed for our salvation, protection and provision. And so right now, saints, as we come around the table, let us celebrate the fact that God's made a way so that even our enemies can be dealt with justly and properly because of what Jesus Christ has done. All right, so let's pray together. Lord, we come before you right now. Lord, I ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, action, motive, intention. Lord, that you'll wash our sins white as snow. Lord, I thank you that as we stand before you holy and pure today, Lord, that you will give us a revelation of the scripture. Lord, that we will know that when we pray for our enemies and we love them unconditionally, Lord, you will work on our behalf. Lord, you have said that you are a just God and Lord, that you will bring righteousness and justice. And Lord, whatever has been done to us, you will sort out. Father, I pray right now for your anointing and blessing. I release the power of God over each one of us. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to do something amazing for every believer in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give us this revelation today in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. I thank you, Lord, that we are healed. Lord, by your stripes, we are healed. Lord, we release the healing power of God and the dunamis power of God to flow in our lives. I thank you, Lord, from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. We are healed and every single symptom is gone. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon us. We thank you for the anointing upon us. And Lord, that we're not going to be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... Amen and amen. Well, folks, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. All right. I want to tell you right now that as we stand on the Saturday, I want to pray for our families. All right. I want to pray for our families. So let's pray. Lord, I pray right now for our families. We lift up our families. Father, I pray your blessing and anointing on each and every family. Lord, I pray that the destiny and purpose will come to the families. And Lord, peace will come in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, thank you that every family will fulfill their destiny and purpose. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to do amazing works in, in, in and through each believer. Lord, we are not going to be the same again. And Lord, that we are going to do what you've called us to do. And we are going to fulfill what you expect from us. But God, I pray for our families that they're going to be born again. That every single person in our family is born again and they love you. And we thank you for your blessing and power over them in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Lord, I pray right now over this COVID virus. I command it to die, dissipate, leave our nation. I thank you, God, that there's not a single sign of COVID in South Africa. Lord, that we can walk with your blessing. We can walk with the anointing. And we can see the power of God being made manifest across our nation. Lord, I release peace over South Africa. I release your blessing over South Africa. And I thank you, Lord, that you are moving in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks. I want to let you know that it's Saturday. So tonight at 7 o'clock, I've got the uh, guest speaker on. So please get ready for that. Okay, so um, I want you to know it's Pastor Les tonight, I think. And he's going to be on. So please be ready at 7 o'clock. Amen. All right, so let's get going with our declaration in jesus name i declare by faith that i walk in divine favor i have supernatural treatment uh, sorry i have preferential treatment supernatural increase restoration increased assets 
great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life. So saints, I want to say it's a wonderful day to be alive. Bless the Lord and go do what God has called you to do in Jesus' mighty name.